Hello, and welcome back to BlackWhoMinistries.com, where we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I'm your host, Minister Love, and we got another exciting lesson today where we're talking about this couple called the priests and the Levites. So call your family, call your friends, and let them know that Black Who Ministries is on the air. So as you can see, we're going to be looking at this couple, the priests and the Levites, as you can see the images that we have here for you on today for lesson number seven. But before we get into the teachings, let's go ahead and we're going to welcome in uh, our Father, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Ghost, our Comforter in prayer. Let's do that, please. Let's welcome them in. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we welcome you in today. Welcome you all in to join in and open up the word to us today and give us some insight into who this couple is. We are excited. And Father, we're praying for our nation today. We're praying for the world today, Father God, as we're going through some ups and downs. But we know in prayer that all things work together for the good of those that love you. So that's our prayer today, that you will bless those that are seeking the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. I tell you, God loves prayer just as is we love giving it to him. Amen. All right, then everyone. So we always set the precept before we actually go down into the scriptures, because what we're learning here, we're going to be learning the Greek word and the Hebrew word. Okay. So when you're reading your Bible, you have an idea uh, of what these words are in their original native language. So again, we're talking about the couple, the priest and the Levites. So let's see what word is used in Hebrew for the uh, priest. And so here the priests are called the Cohen. They called the Cohen. And a priest acquires more upper positions than a Levite. A priest can enter any holy place and is only the one the tribe to do so, the only uh, of the tribes to do so. So in the Greek, if you want to know what this word priest was pronounced there, you would say Archerius, Archerius. And this is the high priest, literally of the Jews, typically of Christ, by extension of a chief priest, the chief high priest, he's the chief of the priest. So you got high priest and then you got regular priest. Okay. So now we see that if in the Hebrew, uh, you would say Cohen. In the Greek, you would say archeros, okay? So that's how you would say this priest. And now we know what the priests do. The priest is the one, see, they're different. The, the priest is the one that's in charge of going into the, the temple of God. Remember, in, there in the Old Testament, he was the one that went into the, the holy of holies and spoke with God and, and God spoke with him. And so the priest had certain duties to do. He was the one that made the sacrifices. He was the one that had the altar of incense. He was the one that uh, that went and uh, made sure that the, the menorah was lit. So the priest, the chief priest, like Aaron was, had certain duties. Well, let's go to the Levites. So how would you say the Levites in uh, Hebrew and Greek? Well, in Hebrew, we would say maka uh, okay. Ma, uh, okay. And these are the Levites and the Levites are males who claims a descent from the tribe of Levi. And Levi was the third son of Jacob. So, you know, Jacob had 12 boys. So out of all the tribes, God chose the tribe of Levi to represent or minister to him in the temple or in the tabernacle at first, at the tabernacle first. And so they, so both of them, the priests and the Levites came from the tribe of Levi, but yet and still each one had their own duties. They had separate duties, but they was operating in the service of God. So how would we say uh, the Levites in the Greek or the New Testament? You would call it Luitikos. Luiticos, okay? And so that's Levites in the Greek. So the Levites are not permitted to perform sacrifices. Their main duties were to maintain the religious activities of the 
tabernacle. So you needed someone there to make sure all the utensils was there, to make sure that there was enough water uh, to uh, uh, sacrifice with the animals. They had to make sure the curtain was right. They made sure that the religious part of the uh, service of the ministry to God, the Levites did that. But the one that went actually into the Holy of Holies, that was the chief priest. All right. So now that we understand the Hebrew and the Greek words for the priests and the Levites, we now have to determine, is this a usual or unusual couple? So I'm going to give you a moment to think about that. We just told you what they do, their duties. So would you say they're usual or unusual? All right. Time is up. Okay. So Minister Love is going to say, this is a usual couple. That we're going to see in the scriptures that they're usual. They belong together. You know, sometimes with couples, they belong together, but sometimes we act up. Uh, there's a tear or a rip in the relationship. And it doesn't mean that you need to destroy the relationship, but you want to come together and see what you can do to rectify the relationship because you are usual. You belong together. Sometimes unusual things happen, but that's why we have an outlet called what? Repentance. We can always repent and go back to God and, and ask God to help us to be better in the relationship. So with that being said, oh my God, I'm just loving this already. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into our very first scripture. Okay. So we're going to get into our first scripture. So let's go over to uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, and we're going to take a look at verse 1, and then we're going to go down to verse 4. Now, just so you know, now this scripture was written around about 1000 BC, okay? And so here we're going to see the relationship, what's going on with this couple. So again, two things we're going to be looking for in the scriptures. Who is talking about this couple, and what are they saying? What are they saying about this couple? Is it usual or is it unusual? Okay, so let's take a look and let's see what the book of Kings has to say. So we have verse one. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel to King Solomon in Jerusalem that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. Take a look at verse four. Then they brought up the Ark of the Lord, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Wow, look at this. So here's King Solomon. And Solomon had just finished the temple. He just finished this beautiful temple. They say it was the most beautiful building at that time. And so, you know, it was just outlaid with gold and beautiful columns and steps and tears. I mean, it was just a beautiful temple. So now Israel, remember, they had the tabernacle all this time because David couldn't build the the temple. Solomon built the temple. So before Solomon's day, they had to worship God and they had to meet God at the tabernacle. So now that the temple is built, Solomon has gathered everyone together. He got the elders of Israel, got all the heads of the tribes. And who else is there? The Levites and the priests. So now they're getting ready to go to the temple. Why? They got to be a purpose. So all of these individuals is going to the temple. Somebody got to have some service. Someone is doing something. Let's take a look and see what the, what the priests and the Levites are going to be doing. So look what they said in verse four. Then they brought up the ark of the Lord. Let's stop right there. Who is the they? Who were the ones that was in charge of the Ark of the Lord or the Ark of the Covenants, uh, some of the scriptures may say? It was the, the tribe of the Levites, wasn't it? It had to be of that tribe. They were the ones that God had called to carry him, to carry the Ark of the Covenant. So now you got these priests and the Levites working what? Together, because this is a usual thing. And so look what the scripture says what else that they're doing. Not only did they bring up the Ark of the Lord, but they brought up the tabernacle of meeting. So now they bring in the tabernacle. You know, that tabernacle that Moses had them making the, in the wilderness, they're bringing that now. And what else are they bringing? 
all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. So remember what we said. The priests and the Levites got two different duties. So now the, the Levites, we know they're in charge of the holy furnishings. They got to make sure that everything is there. The table of showbread, the menorah, the altar of incense. Uh, they had to make sure all of those furnishing pieces were there when they get to this brand new temple. So when they get there, look what the scripture says. It says that the priests and the Levites brought them up. So there it is, isn't it? So King Solomon knows he knew who was in charge. He knew which tribe were responsible for that, for the, uh, the furnishings of the temple of, of the tabernacle. It was the priests and the Levites. And this is usual. This is a usual thing to be happening. Wow. What a look at our very first scripture to see the correlation within this couple. Okay. So I know you got your Bibles. Let's get ready for the next scripture. Let me take you on down to Ezra. Okay. Let's take a look at Ezra chapter one, and we're going to take a look at verse two, and then we're going to drop down to verse five. Okay. Now remember the key words today is what? Priests and Levites. And so we want to know who is talking about this couple and what are they saying? Is it usual or unusual? Of what they're what they know about this couple. Take a look. Excuse me. So it says, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Verse 5. Then the heads of the father's houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all whose spirits of God had moved, arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. Oh, I love this scripture with Ezra. So Ezra, we know, lived around the same time as Nehemiah now. This is happening now that they're getting ready to leave Babylon so they can come back to Jerusalem. So who's in charge now? No more Nebuchadnezzar. It's the uh, uh, Persia is the new empire and King Cyrus is the king of Persia. Now, now Persia was a, a pagan nation, but somehow God can use his enemies for his benefit. So God had a relationship with King Cyrus. He done spoke to uh, Cyrus and Cyrus is now telling Ezra and the children of Israel, hey, look, I'm gonna tell you what God told me. You guys can go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the temple that Nebuchadnezzar had torn down. You got my permission to go back and rebuild. And so he's telling everyone, all of you, uh, the heads of the fathers, all the, uh, uh, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And then he brings up the priests and the Levites. So even King Cyrus knows something about the priests and the Levites, doesn't he? So he said, all of you guys that has the spirit of God up on you, God has moved you. So now get up, leave Babylon, get up and go on back to Jerusalem and build the house of the Lord. Man, so you know when they rebuild it, you know when they put the walls up, you know when they relay the foundation, build the walls and making the temple the way it was, you know, uh, before it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. Somebody got to do the work. There's a lot of work to be done. And who do you think is going to be doing the temple work? The, the, the ones that's going to be doing the sacrifices, the one that's going to be making sure the furnishings are right in the proper place, making sure the bread is baked, making sure that the, the high priest has on his FR, making sure everything in place is the priests and the Levites. Someone is going to have to go inside that uh, temple. Someone is going to have to speak to God on behalf of the people. And they and it's going to be the what? Chief priests going in with that uh, censer, altar of incense, putting it in and praying over God's people. Everybody got a duty. The priests have their duty and the Levites have theirs. What about you and I today? What are we doing for the service of God? What are we doing for the kingdom of God? Do uh, Are we working the service that God has given us? You know, we are in a relationship with God. We are in a relationship with him. We all ought to know what our duties is. If God called you to be a prophet, be a prophet. Don't try to be a uh, uh, an, 
apostle or a minister of healing. It's just like if God gave you the gift of teaching, then teach. And then sometimes God may give you multiple gifts. And if he does, hallelujah to you. But if he just gave you one, stick with that and perfect it and be that. Operate in your gift because we all got something to do. There's a lot of work to be done in the kingdom of God, just like it was back in this day in 538 BC. It's still happening right here in the 21st century. All right, then, everyone. So there we have it. King Cyrus is telling us something about this couple of the priests and the Levites. Even he knew the importance of their service to, in order to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. All right, so let's take a look at our next scripture. And we're going to go to Isaiah now, Isaiah chapter 66. And we're going to take a look at verse 20 and 21. Now, Isaiah also is a prophet. Now, he wrote this around about 700 BC. It's when Isaiah was uh, prophesying, okay? So now during this time, during Isaiah time, uh, Babylon wasn't in the picture. This is like maybe about 200 years, almost 200 years before Babylon came. So now we're dealing with Assyria. You know, Israel had a lot of enemies surrounding her. You know, she would dabble over in with Assyria. She'd go to Egypt. She'd go to Babylon. She'd go to Persia. She was all over the place. So here it was Assyria that had Israel in captivity. So let's take a look and let's see what's going on with the priests and the Levites here. Then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to the Lord out of all nations on horses and in chariots and in litters on mules and on camels to my holy mountain. Jerusalem says the Lord. So they're coming from it. They're coming from Assyria now. They're coming from all of those other nations. God has scattered them. So God is gathering them back together again so they can go where? To his holy mountain. Look what he says also. He says, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. So now they're coming back to Jerusalem and they're going to be going back to the temple. And so they're going to be coming in into the temple and they got to make sure that these vessels, you know, the utensils and everything that they had to prepare for the service of the Lord in the temple. These vessels got to be what? Clean vessels. And we're not just saying clean vessels of the, the uh, material vessels, you know, the spoons and the bowls and the cups. But the priests, the Levites, they are also vessels. So they need to be clean. Coming out of exile, they need to now have their minds made up. We are not serving the pagan gods. No, I'm, I'm a clean vessel. I'm going to be used for the service of God. So look what the Lord tells the prophet Isaiah, in verse 21. He says, and I, this is the Lord talking. He says, and I will also take some of them for priests and what? Levi says the Lord. So when everyone come back to the temple, the Lord is saying, okay, I'm going to need some priests. I'm going to need some Levites because there's what? Work to be done. They've got the sacrifices got to be prepared. Everything got to be set up for the ministry to the Lord. So there it is again. Isaiah, just like we saw with Ezra, uh, just like we saw in Kings with Solomon, the priests and the Levites, they belong together. This is a usual couple. Ooh, I pray that you guys are enjoying this teaching with me on today. We thank God for opening up our eyes and ears. Amen. So let's take a look at another scripture. And we're still hanging out in the Old Testament. There's a lot to learn about this couple, the priests and the Levites in the Old Testament, because that's where they got their start from. You guys remember the very first mention of the priest was when Melchizedek. Remember, he met Abram. He met Abram and came down and, and, and had bread and wine. Remember, we had that teaching on the bread and wine. Well, Melchizedek was the high priest of who? The most high God. And so if Melchizedek uh, had a relationship with God, surely we can too. So the priests and the Levites, let's see what Ezekiel has to say. Now, Ezekiel was written around about 600 BC. Now, keep this in mind. Ezekiel was written right around the time with uh, with Babylon. 
with uh, Nebuchadnezzar. That's in that time frame as well. And let's see what he has to say. The prophet has to say from what God is telling the prophet is he says in verse 10. And the Levites who went far from me, when Israel went astray, who strayed away from me after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. See, going over there with Babylon, see, messing with Babylon and her false gods, and they went astray from God. Kind of like what some of us do today. You know, in the body of Christ, we stray away from the truth and we start following idols. We have made people our idols. We have made social media our idols. We will look to them before we even look to God. So you, you get strayed away from the Lord. And so look what he says in verse 15. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, who kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went what astray from me. They shall come near me to minister to me and they shall stand before me to offer to me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. Wow. Now this is coming out of God's mouth. Did y'all hear this? Did you see the scripture? God is speaking to Ezekiel and he's telling about this couple, the priest and the Levites. God is saying, okay, when they get back, he says, there was some, there was some that stayed faithful to me. Although they may have went into exile, but they was faithful. They was faithful to, to, to remember my statutes, my commandments, my judgments and what I wanted. And these were the sons of Zadok. So, so when they get back to Jerusalem, uh, the Lord is saying that, that these sons of Zadok, they, got, they, they kept my charge. So they're, they, they're going to minister to me. They're going to go into the, uh, the temple and they're going to op offer up the, uh, the, the sacrifices. They're going to go in there and do the praying and, and do the altar of incense and, and, and like the menorah. They're going to do all of that. Wow. I love this because God is making it what personal. He said that they, this couple now, this usual couple, the priests and the Levites, he said, they're going to minister to me. Can you imagine that? ministering directly to God. What about us today? You know, first Peter talks about uh, uh, we're being priests and kings with God. And Revelation chapter one talks about uh, we're going to be a reigning priest with God in heavenly places. Wow. So here it is. We, we are seeing that the priests and the Levites way back in 600 BC ministering to God. And here we are in the 21st century. And what are we doing? ministering before God. See, anytime that you're in the word of God, that's why we're called Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding the wisdom. Why? Because we have made up our minds. We are devoted. We are committed to what? Achieving. Achieving is an active word. It's an ongoing word. It doesn't stop. You keep going. You keep going into uh, eternity. You're always achieving something about Christ. There's something new every day in this Bible. So we got to stand before God. They're standing before God. They're ministering for God. They got a reason. They got a purpose. Why? Because they got to offer the sacrifices. They got to make sure the fat in the blood is being offered to God. They got to, you know, separate the, the 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 skin from the fat in the blood and all of that stuff. There's a lot of blood being uh, spilled there at the temple. Somebody got to clean it up. It's just like a lot of blood is being spilled right here in today's time. Blood is being spilled from uh, uh, mass murder shootings and stuff. Uh, blood is being spilled from people being hatred and, and bitter with one another, anger and frustration. That's like blood being spilled in the spirit. But we call ourselves so-called Christians and ministering before God. We can't do that. We got to come to God as a what? Clean vessels. And that what we saw in the last scripture, not only does the physical utensils need to be clean, but we as the vessels, we're carrying the word. We're bringing the word to the world. We got to be what? Clean. God don't want his word in no dirty vessel. We got to be clean. Woo, man, something about being a priest and a Levite. Let's take a look at our fifth scripture. Now we're going to go to another prophet. Let's take a look at Jeremiah. And again, Jeremiah is right there with um, Ezekiel, right? Uh, during the Babylon, I mean, Ezra, during Ezra's time. 
uh, doing uh, with Babylon. So let's see, Jeremiah 33, we're going to take a look at verse 17 and 18. And again, what are the key words? Priests and Levites. And who's talking about this couple and what do they know about this couple? What is it, usual or unusual? Let me just say this. You know, you can have a usual relationship, you know, uh, but you you can do unusual things in that relationship. Unusual things can come up, but it doesn't mean you got to dissolve the re relationship. You try to work it out. You repent. You turn around. You recognize your errors so you can make amends and so you can get the relationship back in order. You know, there are some, some people even in the Bible and today. You know, uh, uh, God may not answer you when you want and you give up on God. You, you, you go astray. Remember the scripture we read about them being astray, led astray. We have that today. People are being led astray with crazy teachings, crazy doctrines. People just saying anything, making up prophecies, speaking prophecy to my God told them this. God said this and God ain't said nothing. See, you're a dirty vessel. You're not clean. You're a dirty vessel. So here in Jeremiah, let's take a look. But thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Verse 18. Nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me, to kindle grain offerings and to sacrifice continually. Oh, I love this. You know, here, Jeremiah, the prophet, I, I love how God can go back years before. See, Jeremiah came along about 400 years after David. And now Jeremiah is talking about David. So David isn't alive here in this text. But what God is telling the prophet Jeremiah that David ain't going to lack a man on his throne. Who do you think this man is? Who do you think is sitting on David's throne forever? It is none other than Jesus Christ himself. If you guys go back and check out one of my teachings, I did the genealogy of Jesus. And go to our YouTube channel, The Bible Talk Show, and you can check out uh, these videos. I did a wonderful a genealogy teaching of Jesus. And in Matthew chapter one, the very first part of that chapter talks about Jesus' genealogy. Do you know what it says? It says, Jesus, the son of David. What? Yes, it does. Read it for yourself. How could that how could that be written in the New Testament? Because God is telling Jeremiah right here that David's throne will not lack a man sitting on it. And we know Jesus is the son of man. He's the son of God. Jesus is right now sitting on that very throne that Jeremiah is talking about here in the text. So let's see who else Jeremiah is talking about. In verse 18, what did he say? He says, nor shall the priests and the Levites lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me. So this is God talking. So God is saying, okay, I got David on the throne, which is my son, Jesus. But you know what? I still need my priests and my Levites. Who is that? Us believers today. Remember, uh, uh, go to first Peter. I believe it's first Peter two, verse five and nine. And uh, also go to Revelation chapter one, verse six. And those scriptures is talking about you and I today, where it's talking about that we are priests now. We are priests now with Jesus. So Jesus is the he's the king. He's the high priest, just like Melchizedek. And Jesus is the chief priest and we're the little priests and Levites working in the kingdom of God. That's why we have to uh, 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 ask, seek uh, and knock on the door for the kingdom of God uh, uh, because we're working. We're the, the modern day Levites and priests. Wow. What a beautiful scripture to see that this couple really is a usual couple. They do belong together. Even the Lord out of his own, own mouth is telling the prophet Jeremiah this. So God put them together. God was the one that called uh, uh, the tribe of Levi out for his special uh, will and purpose. Uh, uh, God had told them, he says, I'm your inheritance. I, I thought that was beautiful. I was reading God's word. And he says, the, uh, I'm your inheritance, uh, 
the tribe of Levi. So they didn't have to go out on the battlefield and war and fight like all the other tribes. They had their own duties. And that was ministering to God before God and with God. That was the priest and the Levites duty was in service exclusively to the almighty God. Can you imagine yourself today and God has called you to work in the kingdom of God and you're doing it exclusively? See, nobody can do what you do. When God gives you to do something, when he has gifted you to teach and preach and share, uh, to do whatever he's called you to do, sing or uh, 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 prophesy, heal, that gift is exclusively to you. Only you can do it, but you got to do it with a willing spirit and a willing flesh. Get your spirit and your flesh in order. You know, we talked about that couple too. So when you do that, then you can you can uh, be before God on a continuous basis. So God ain't lacking. God's kingdom ain't lacking for no one that is going to serve him. God is always going to find someone that's after his what? Heart, just like David was. Woo, man, I just love these teachings. Let's take a look, everyone. We're going to go down to the New Testament. This is the end. This is our last scripture. So John chapter one, we're going to take a look at verse 19 and 20. And so this scripture was written around about 30 AD. Okay, so this scripture was written in 30 AD. And let's take a look and we're going to see what this scripture is telling us. It says, now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed, I I'm not the Christ. So here we are in the New Testament. Now, you got the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who are now these what? Priests and Levites. So look at that. This couple is still operating. They're still together. Now, remember what we said, they're a usual couple, but sometimes they do what? Unusual things. So by them being the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests and the Levites, you would think that they would know the scriptures. You would think that they would know that John the Baptist was, was uh, not Jesus Christ. And they're going to, and, and, and now they're sending priests and Levites to go ask John, who is he? You ought to know. You should know, priests and Levites. You ought to know. You should know with the services that you do, all with the tabernacle, with the sacrifices there in the temple. See, at this time, they got the temple. Uh, they have uh, reconstructed Solomon's temple. And here uh, in the New Testament, it wasn't called Solomon's temple anymore. It was called uh, Herod's temple because Herod built an extension to that temple. So here uh, uh, you still got the priests and the Levites doing that animal sacrifices. See, if they had known the scriptures, they would have known that Jesus is now on the earth and Jesus is that sacrifice. He's the ultimate sacrifice. If they had known their scriptures, see, they was doing unusual things, dibble, dibble and dabbling in their own interpretations of the scriptures, wanting, wanting the people to keep them uplifted rather than them lifting up the people with the word of God. Because you got to remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they walked around the streets of Jerusalem with their heads up, with their beautiful robes on. They had their nice uh, turbans on and everything. I mean, the best garment, the best material. I mean, they're just walking fine. You know, like a man wearing a three-piece suit or something, you know, today. So the so they have lifted themselves up to the point that they couldn't even recognize John the Baptist that he was a forerunner that Isaiah had prophesied about. I mean, I think Micah had uh, prophesied about being a, a forerunner. So there it is, right there, isn't it? The priest and the Levites is still a couple, but right here they was doing unusual things. All right, then everyone. Thank you so much for being with us here on this lesson today. We just want to remind everyone about uh, registering your Bible. You can go to mybibleregistration.com. We got the Bible reading plan there for you. And uh, we're in the month of February. And you know, like I say, every week when you read your Bible every day, you are making a spiritual investment. So if you just gave God one hour, 
Uh, that's five percent of ten percent of your time. So if we give God ten percent, like we give Him ten percent of our money, but give Him ten percent of our time, that's more valuable than your money. God don't want your money. God wants your time. Because he'll take your time and turn that into money and you can give him more money. But if you're giving God more money and giving him no time, then that's not a good investment. Take a look what happens when you give God a uh, 5% of 10% of your time. You can give God one hour a day for the month of February. That mean, that equivocates to what? 28 hours, 1,680 minutes, 100,800. Hundred seconds. That's what we can give God in one month in the month of February. What a great investment. How can we do that? Because we are in a relationship with God. We're a couple with God. We're the new priests. We're the new Levites. This is a service that we give unto the Lord. So I pray that you will read your Bible along with us on this Bible reading plan. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. So also, woo, we want you guys to know that we got a YouTube channel. That's right. Minister Love want to take you to our new YouTube channel. And you can go to the Minister Love Show 8308. And there on the uh, YouTube channel, it's called the Minister Love Talk Show. Not only will you see these teachings there, but we're going to be bringing you uh, uh talking with family and friends and community people. We're going to be talking about what they love. What do you love? And you can talk about it. So if you want to be a part of this, you can uh, email us at faithandlove2 at yahoo.com and you'll be able to get in on this new YouTube channel where we are talking about whatever you want to talk about. What do you love? So join us and be a subscriber too. Subscribe to our new channel. We would love to hear from you. All right then, everyone. So with that being said, remember blackhoodministries.com. You can go to our website and check out all the great things that we're posting there. And if you would like to make a donation to support this ministry, we would love to hear from you. God will always bless you when you're blessing his word. Amen. And you can just go to the website. We make it easy. There's a simple PayPal button. Just click that button and make your donation. God bless you. And you uh, again, if you want to email us, uh, you can email us uh, for Black Koo. And it's at loveblackku at gmail.com. Loveblackku at gmail.com. That's where you can reach blackhoodministries.com. Amen. All right then, everyone. Well, with that being said, I thank you all for being with me today and not just uh, watch this video, this teaching with me, but go and watch our students too, because the students of Black Who, they have their videos as well, where I do a one-on-one -on -one teaching with uh, the Black Who students. So we encourage you to watch all of the videos because everyone brings their perspective to these teachings and it is phenomenal. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close us out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you so much for bringing your word to us today that you open up our eyes and our ears that we were able to see that this couple, the priests and the Levites do belong together and we are that new generation. So we do belong with you, Lord, and we thank you thanking you for your love and grace that we can share with others. We want to help people to learn the gospel. We want to help people to be studious of your word so they can share it. Don't just be a hearer, but be a doer as well. Bless America, bless every nation, every country on all the continents, Lord, that every mouth is fed. Everyone have enough food, enough finances, enough clothes, enough shelter, enough love to keep us together. So we thank you and we praise you. Until we see you this time next week. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right, then, everyone. Well, that's going to do it here at BlackHoodMinistries.com. Again, I'm your host, Minister Love. You want to tune in next week? Woo, we're going to be on another great couple where you're going to have to decide, is this couple usual or unusual? And the couple next week is going to be gold and silver. All right. God bless you all. I'm into love. I love you all. And God loves you more until this time next week. Take care and be a blessing to someone. Goodbye.